Hey, what's up, YouTube? Welcome to Kovacs Corner. Appreciate you taking the time, clicking on that video. We're about to take a look and react to a lost gem, forgotten 90s anime. I'm pretty sure a good majority of all of us ended up watching back in the day. It was one of my favorite animes. Uh, Metabots, a forgotten 90s gem. All credibility goes to Ritaku. Did all the research for it. Shout him out. Like, sub, check his channel out. He does a bunch of anime and gaming content. So check him out, man. Like, sub, all that. All credit goes to the homie. Appreciate letting us react to it, but let's get into it. So, like, yo, back in the day, I used to love Metabots. Metabots was one of the dopest things I thought, other than like Pokemon, Yu Gi Oh! and stuff like that, and Digimon. Metabots. Let's get into it. The 90s was full of amazing anime. We got the likes of Pokemon, Digimon, Beyblade, and many more. DBZ. Beyblade was pretty sick. But one particular show appears to have been largely forgotten. That show, my friends, is called Metabots. Metabots was sick, man. Yo, Metabi was a different breed. How he ended up finding uh, the gem to go in his back and stuff like that. Just like at the riverside, it's like a super rare one. It's crazy. Oh, and Metabee's like a mad old Metabot that Icky pretty much got like second hand, right? And that's Icky. Metabot originally started out as a video game franchise, much like Pokemon did. A series of Metabot games released for the Nintendo platforms. And by the tail end of the 90s, a Metabot anime adaptation was greenlit. Studio B Train animated the first season, which will be the focus of this video. So I don't know if it came out in like 99, 2000, 2001 here in Canada, because we used to watch it on YTV. Uh, it came on Fox after we received it on, uh, on YTV and stuff like that. And then when Crunchyroll came into play and all that, I'm pretty sure it's still on Crunchyroll. If not, then pfft. They need to get on their job. <laughs> Released domestically in 1999, the series centers around a young boy named Icky, who aims to be the top meta fighter in the world. Metabots, also known domestically as meta rats, are artificially intelligent robots. Nice. These That's robots cool. are extremely popular amongst children, whom use them to participate in duels referred to as role battles. These are akin to say. Yo, the best thing about this show, every time there is a role battle, You'd have referee come out nowhere. Row battle! <laughs> Fucking killed it. Trainer battles, but unlike in Pokemon and Digimon, Metabots cannot organically evolve. Instead, similar to how improvements are made to Beyblade, a Metabot's abilities are enhanced by the path it is given, which can often be modified. Metabots are not only used for the purpose of battle, they can also be used functionally in society in order to serve humans just like the robots did in the movie by robots. Unlike most robots from that movie who must abide by the three laws, Metabots are quite similar to Pokemon and Digimon as they each have their own personalities and quirks. Yo, it <laughs> yeah, Metabee was an asshole, man. Metabee didn't like Icky, he didn't want to do anything for Icky pretty much at the very beginning, no respect no respect but it's it's the metal that he had in his back it was like a rare beetle metal or something like that but yeah and another thing that was actually pretty cool so like in pokemon how you end up uh doing a poke battle and all that you end up getting money from it like gambling while in metabots they used to play for meta parts so you'd have extra parts to throw onto your metabot in case there was a sticky situation in order to get around it you have that extra part that has like X amount of whatever ability it was. You know what I'm saying? Metabots are made up of three key components, so let's briefly cover over them. The first component is the timber, which makes up the basic skeleton. frame of a metabot. The timber is a metallic skeleton with muscle cables as the main component, enabling flexible movements and support for multiple parts with complex shapes. In addition, there are two types of models, male and female. The second component is a metal, which is a small... So, like, for male and female, so, like, yo, that was the beetle metal. Super dope. But, yeah, for male and female, I don't feel like that should matter. They're, they're robots. <laughs> what? 
What? Ah. Uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> multiple parts with complex shape. In addition, there are two types of models, male and female. That doesn't the make sense. The second component is a metal, which is a small hexagonal metal that acts as the metabot brain. Each metal provides a metabot with its own personality, and they perform better or worse dependent on the different parts used. These unique parts are known as meta parts, which is the third and final component which we will cover shortly. Not all metals are the same. Certain rare metals allow a metabot to use the meta force. In the anime specifically, a metabot with a rare metal are able to use the meta force, which gives the robot a massive power boost for a short period of time. So the metal force, eh? It's kind of like Beyblade when they used to call upon the creature within the Beyblade. Give it that extra little bit of a oomph. And now onto the final component. Meta parts function as the robot's muscles as well as its weaponry. In battle, these parts determine what kind of abilities a metabot is capable of using and yep. what kinds of terrain it is better suited to navigate. And that's true, kind of like the info tracks. You throw tracks on them if it's a rocky, grainy kind of terrain and whatever. Help them move, the mobility. There are four parts a metabot must wear in order for it to be completely operative. Arms, the head legs, part torso. Is where the metal head. is protected. If the head of a metabot ceases its functions, the metal will eject and the metabot will no longer be operational. In a battle, the head is the part which has limited abilities, mostly functioning as a protective housing unit for the metal. The parts used for the left arm and right arm determine the other two abilities a metabot can perform. These parts can perform attacks so long as they're active, without restriction, and the metabot itself is still operative. The parts used for its legs will determine how fast a metabot is and will also determine the terrain the metabot will move better or worse in. I plan to do an episode by episode breakdown of metabots first season, similar to some of these videos. So if you would like to see that, please do smash the like button and consider subscribe. Like, subscribe. Check it out, because I'm I'm going to be checking that out. That's pretty dope. I've been to the channel. The anime series is an adaptation of the first two video games called Medarot 1 and Medarot 2. The show, however, is mainly based on Medarot 2, but also references backstory from the first Medarot game. Some of the characters are written slightly different for the show. Characters like the Phantom Renegade is written to be less of an antagonistic figure and more so depicted as a Robin Hood esque vigilante who sometimes. I always thought that he was like a Robin Hood esque vigilante. You know what I'm saying? He seemed like he wanted to be uh, like Tuxedo Knight from Sailor Moon. Times <laughs> aids Icky in his journey. We follow Icky, an elementary school student who is the only one at school who does not have a metabot of his own. See? You know what's funny? So like these were the antagonists, almost like Team Rocket. I'm telling you, man, it was it, they were so funny. Hers is Pepper Cat. I'm pretty sure was the name of her metabot, and like it's pretty dope, super fast, super fast, and like ran with blades and stuff like that. It was pretty cool. But you can imagine, there's nothing he wants more than to have one. One day, Icky finds a medal in the river, but this is no mere ordinary medal. It is in fact an extremely rare one. An emergency forces him to use up his savings to buy an older model Medabot in order to help his friend Erika. Remember that medal he found? Well, it ends up putting Icky in an odd situation when he soon finds his Medabot, he refers to as Meta B, is extremely stubborn and does not listen to his instructions. Yeah. Meta B's sassy personality often leads him to clash with Icky. The best way I can describe their relationship in the beginning is toxic. It's funny that they say toxic because it's, it, it's almost like with uh, Ash and Charmander. How Charmander was super loyal and stuff like that to like a fault where he was waiting on that rock almost past and stuff. And then when he evolves into Charmeleon, he has no respect for Ash. And then Charizard, no respect. You have to earn the respect. And know what else I think is funny here? It's a training montage. But it's like, bro, the robots. <laughs> they don't need this. They don't need to pull tires and run. But on the <coughs> toxicity between two grown adults, their hostility towards <laughs> one another comes from a face of childish ignorance. As time passes, they slowly build a friendship based on mutual respect and trust in one another as they go on to become great partners. 
Just like Ash and Charizard. By his side, Icky is well on his way to fulfilling his lifelong dream of becoming the top-ranked meta fighter, all whilst making new friends and fighting against the evil Robo Robo gang. A great show is nothing without a strong roster. It's funny that that robot gang too. They use ours like Team Rocket. Of interesting side characters. To temper your expectations here, this is not an anime such as Attack on Titan, Hunter x Hunter, or Demon Slayer, where characters have complexly woven backstories. But the strength of these characters are in their quirks, which makes them all the more endearing. Take Iki's best friend Erika, an aspiring journalist who will do just about anything to get the latest scoop, even if that means putting herself in danger's way. Er Yo, she put herself in so much danger's way all the time. All the time. It, it was kind of annoying. I'm not gonna lie. She's like, oh, I need to get the scoop. I forget the name of uh, her metabot, but like all the time. Causing icky grief. <laughs> Erica is strong willed and independent, but she also has a sweet feminine side and a clear soft spot for icky, which helps balance out her character. Even seemingly inconsequential characters like, say, Culture Mountain, one of the school faculty, has a charm to him. You know what's funny about this dude, too? He like comes down on the class about all the all the metabots and stuff like that. Like forget metabots, you know, do training, makes them run laps and stuff like that. The end of the one episode, they end up following him into a back alley in the city. This man Majam is out here roll battling for for bucks, straight bucks. Homeboy's stacked. He's, He's like a whole mob thing character. too. It's crazy. He's completely obsessed with exercise. I mean, he even hates Metabots for no other particular reason but because he feels they distract the kids, which Fact. prevents them from pursuing more physical activities. Well, it turns out he's actually a sweetheart, as he used up all his funds to kit out his own Metabot he named Big Mole. The reason you ask? Well, the reason is so that he can roll battle against a gangster who refers to himself as Big Brother. You see, this gangster is trying to purchase a plot of land in the coach's neighborhood. So what's the big deal with that, right? Well, the issue is that the neighborhood children have always wanted somewhere they could go and play. So Coach Mountain promised to build a park for them by purchasing that very land. Every penny he would earn, he was saving towards purchasing that land. The local crook refused to back out of his bid to buy the land. So Coach Mountain purchased Big Mole. In wanna be, wanna be friggin' mob member right there. This is the scene that I was talking about. How he's like in the back alley, row battling these mamma jammas. I thought it was a whole. It's kind of like a money situation because he wanted to open that up for the kids and stuff for them to like after school special kind of place. It's pretty cool, man. In order to get Big Brother to back out by defeating him in a row battle, not only are the human characters funny and interesting, so too are the metabots themselves. Take Meta B for example. For me, he's the real star of the show. Yeah, facts. He's quick-tempered, easily offended, and stubborn, often causing problems for Iki due to his headstrong personality. To add, he also starts off extremely disobedient to his owner. But with that said, Meta B is loyal to those he cares about, and has his own unique way of expressing how much he cherishes them. The relationship between he and Iki starts off toxic as hell, with both tearing into one another over the smallest of things. This makes for some hilarious exchanges between the two, and I also love how respectful Meta B is towards Icky's parents, which only further grinds his gears as his Metabot slowly steps into his role as their son. <laughs> oh, and then there's this guy, called Mr. Referee in the dub or Mr. Aruchi Boom. in the original. This guy's the GOAT. This guy's the GOAT. Mr. Referee show up out of nowhere. Literally, Super Mario Styles out from a cylinder that you know doesn't have a hole in the ground. Like, are you just waiting there? What's going on? Can he teleport? Because, I don't know, man. Either he's a weirdo that's following around Icky and Meta B just to see the role battles. But you see him hosting and refereeing other role battles. I don't know, man. Mr. Referee was the GOAT, but he's kind of weird. I ain't gonna lie. This geezer literally appears out of the blue to officiate all the role battles. Fast. Doesn't matter whether it takes place on the schoolyard or in another galaxy. He'll be there. I found him so annoying in the earlier episodes, but he really does grow on you as the season progresses, as it's evident he's an honest man who loves cheating, and anyone caught doing so when he's refereeing a match will not go away unpunished. The animation for the most part is quite rough around the edges, 
and that's made more apparent in episodes where significant battles unfold, which are far more polished in comparison. But look, most 90s anime weren't exactly mind-blowing in the animation department, and you may Fat Pikachu. argue that some of them played it safe. Take a look at the first season of Pokemon. Battles lack movement, and so too, to a lesser extent, was the case with Digimon. Digimon was a little bit better, though. Like, I'm not, when it comes to the whole battling kind of art, because you were able to see the blasts go back and forth and stuff like that. With Pokemon, it was like they do their attack, you show the Pokemon. I kind of like the way how it's doing right here. It shows the Digimon using the attack. So, like, it was like that with the Pokemon with the back screen moving super fast behind them and whatever. But Digimon did it a little bit better. Pokemon ended up catching up to that. So now the battles look dope that are animated. Dragon Ball Z was the best, a much more in my approach opinion. To their battles. The movement was plenty, along with all the extravagant fireworks too, so I can give them a pass on that front. If you're planning to watch Metabots with the intention of seeing jaw-dropping animation, then this is not the show for you, as this show targets a much more younger demographic. And you know what? It kind of reminds me of the old school Mega Man animations, like back in, back in the days, like back in the early 90s probably like late 80s like 89 90 91 uh mega man was kind of like this kind of style which was pretty cool if you grew up in the 90s and early 2000s like me you may be pleasantly surprised by metabot's artwork even if you haven't watched it before the artwork has that 90s charm that old school grit often associated with the anime of old let me ask you a question are you one of those people who watched metabots as a kid if the answer is yes, then let me ask you a follow-up question. Did you forget about Metabots? No. <laughs> it saddens me to say this, but so many who grew up watching Metabots forgot about it. It's understandable, as I mentioned at the start of this video, the 90s and even the early 2000s had some awesome, awesome anime, so it's hard for our memory banks to keep track of them all. This is the main reason why I wanted to make this video, is to remind those select few of you who may have forgotten about the show to give it a rewatch. You'll be shocked by how quick those memories from your childhood come flooding back to you upon rewatching the show. I also understand that a 50 plus episode season is a huge commitment of time, and most of you watching I'm presuming are adults, working either full time or running a business along- But the thing about that is, there was literally only one season, maybe two, but I'm pretty sure it was just one season of Metabots, and then I thought that they were going to come out with another season, but that's when like Monster Ranchers and all these other uh cartoons were coming out alongside maybe raising a family too so if you guys would like me to do an episode by episode breakdown of metabots first season you can let do it do it i'm going to leave a comment down in the comments for them. let me know in the comments below now for those of you who have never watched metabots before would i recommend you watch it the answer is maybe why well it depends that's because man. it depends on a couple of things if you're someone who grew up watching the likes of Dragon Ball, Pokemon, Digimon, Beyblade, and let's just say the original Hunter x Hunter and so forth, You'd enjoy then it. yes, I absolutely recommend giving Metabots a go. Yeah. It's not only the artwork that will give you that nostalgic feeling of going back to the simpler times of the 90s, but it's also the way in which the characters behave and interact with one another. Top also, I could also say about this art style, there's, a, there's an anime like really old i used to watch them when i was a kid called samurai pizza cats check that out if you ever have the opportunity to i used to i used to watch that when i was a kid same kind of art style and they're almost like teenage mutant ninja turtles they're always eating pizza all <laughs> this unique humor makes it a delight to watch in my opinion for those of you who didn't grow up watching anime and maybe you got into anime more recently you may not find Metabots to be a compelling watch. It's like a charming show. If you spend an hour of your time, just watch the first three episodes to get a flavor of the show, because you never know, it may just tickle your fancy. That's it for this one, folks. If you liked the video, please be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Let me know your thoughts about Metabots in the comment section below. Many of us hold the show near and dear to our hearts, so I'd love to hear your opinions on it. On that note, I will see you on the next one. This is Ray, signing off. Peace. That was a nice little breakdown about Metabots, so you guys can understand. I grew up watching Metabots, and it was one of my favorite shows to watch, like 100% hands down. It was dope. Uh, yeah, no, man, it's almost like a stroll through memory lane.
So with that being said, man, thanks for clicking on the video. I appreciate that. And like, yo, that was very, that was a very well put together video, in my opinion. That was really, bravo. And I want to see him uh, do episode breakdowns of Metabots. So don't forget, leave a comment down under. Let him know. I'm going to be leaving a comment down under right after. Uh, but yeah, man, that's going to do it for this time. I appreciate everybody taking the time. Come through, click on the video, and watch it. Until next time, man. Peace.